Ah, okay, y'all. Um, hopefully this gets up this weekend. It's like, it should be up Sunday. I, I apologize that it's taken me a little longer than yada yada because I still haven't finished going through the four hours of video we wound up doing Tuesday night, which is going to take a little bit of time. Show on Tuesday night. Oh, yeah. It was like we went a little over on PC and then we went on for a few hours on uh, all the political stuff. So, yeah. Oh, where do we want to start with? It's like, believe it or not, that title is out, literally out of the words of Steve John. <laughs> Steve literally said this. <laughs> and it's now known. So, and, 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 I, and I've got to say it now since the, uh, any of the. Uh, the uh, other Apple purists that used to debate me and say, oh no, like especially during Flash versus, a Flash versus HTML5, oh no, Jobs is this new Zen guy. Even on the uh, even on this podcast 5x5, five five, there was a guy who would argue and say, oh no, I don't think Jobs would take anything personal anymore. You know, he's he's a bigger man than that. Bullshit. I argued it then that this man it takes things personal. He has uh, got drive and aggressiveness. It, it, you know, if that's always been his personality, and he and he took it to his grave. And I and I and I'm glad I was proven right on this because I I, I knew better, man. This guy, but that's the one, one thing I always liked about him is you get you, you get out there and you push just as much uh, of the bullies around as they push you around, and that's the way to survive, man. You got to have that sharp edge on. Yeah, see that that's the thing I always had very mixed feelings about Jobs and when Jobs was in charge of Apple. That is like. I I understand from the business standpoint, I can even understand from the personal standpoint, but dude, let it go. <laughs> it's like, no. It's like, no, not I mean see the thing of it is is like if you don't have something to drive you, which is competitiveness, let's be frank. All companies you know, Google made jabs at, at, at Apple, Apple made jabs back. Even Amazon in in, in, in launching the Kindle jabbed Apple. Quite a few times in that keynote. This oh, yeah. competitiveness has to continue. Because if we just get complacent... No, 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 no. I'm not against the competitiveness. I'm all for the competitiveness. It, it. It, 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 it was when... It, it was when he took a difference of opinion, just personal, or that there was competition, personal. Like the well, best, the, the, the root of competition. That's the root of competition. Now, being a good play, but to say that is the root of competitiveness. If see. It has to be personal, and at some level, for it to actually anger you and get you the emotional gumption to follow suit to counter whatever is coming at you. Otherwise, it's not either what is driving the competition. And if, now, here's the difference, though. Of what you're trying to express is that war can be dirty, competitors can be dirty. Being a good sportsman is if you, if okay, if you cheat on the rules and don't play fair, for instance, like if something. Any trust was violated, or, or, or some really unethical business maneuver was made, then that would be not being a good sportsman. But if it, they can fight it out all they want in the court system, so long as they keep it legal, straight, and, and fine, and both Android remains extremely aggressive, and, and Apple and, and other companies that participate, it's all it's all fair game. Now, the second that one of them goes outside. Uh, the legality of things and the ethics of things, then or, no or, or, or tries to bend one of the gray things darkly, or you know, or it's like, okay, you technically didn't violate the letter, but damn, if you didn't piss on the spirit. Can I make a political analogy, real quick? Why, why not? <laughs> uh, all right, the, the last debate where everybody's like, oh, it, the, the Romney and, and Perry were bickering. And, and oh, we don't like this aggressiveness. Our, uh, these people have got to be kidding me. They, li they literally want every Republican candidate to just simply say, "Oh, uh, yes, I'm against Obama, and I'm a conservative," and just go down the line, and then we just get to pick the candidate. Hell no! I want to see passion. I don't want to see some calm dumbass up there because that's uh, somebody who can speak eloquently and, ha and doesn't show me passion and gumption. It's just going to be another fruitcake up there uh, running the country. I want to see somebody who's who's got that that drive, that that aggressiveness. That's what drives her. I can't stand this mentality of like, oh my God, they're bickering. They shouldn't be uh, arguing with each other. These people, let's say, they need to get a life. They need to move somewhere else, man. This is this is this is had or be had. I I, I'm so, I I'm sorry. Part of 
a debate is arguing. You know, exactly. this is my opinion. <laughs> Prove me wrong. You know, where it gets to be a pro where the bickering gets to be a problem is where somebody points out that you're full of shit, and you go, "No, I'm not," because I say so. That's where it <laughs> gets to be a problem. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm telling that audience was totally loaded for Rodney on that, but he interrupted just as much as Perry, and that's that. That's that aggressiveness. Jobs got it. He's got aggression. Bill Gates had it, has has aggression. I mean, even uh, Steve I mean, Ballmer, not so much. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> No, no, was not. No, no, no. I said Steve Ballmer because you brought up Bill's Gates. <laughs> but you, you know, other companies on how they set to get, they, they have that aggression, that drive. You gotta take shit personally. It's just how you how you handle yourself by taking it personally, and and are you gonna play? Are you gonna play it fair? Uh, or are you going to go to some stupid, uh, unethical, illegal, crazy thing to get back at the person? Well, and then there's like literally like getting into this quote, you know, he was pledging, I will spend Apple's whole $40 billion to do this. And it's like, um, that's not a good idea, Steve. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and, and, and as you and I were discussing before we started recording the show, that's where Tim Cook would say, no, you're not Jobs. But let me say, isn't that the point that I was discussing? See? That's what Apple needs to find in a new CEO. Somewhere out there, you need to get a crazy ass SOB, aggressive, you know, this aggressive SOB out there that's gonna have that drive. That will say that I'm gonna spend 40 billion. And then Tim Cook is the counterbalance to that. And I'm gonna tell you right now, everybody in charge of Apple right now is this analytical mindset. They're not that personality to take it, to take it that much personal to, to have that drive. And that's what Apple's gonna need. I'm telling you. Well, especially since, you know, like getting on to the, because we're going a little out of order and I don't really care. I mean, but like the on top of that, the tide is turning right now. I mean, the, in spite of the fact that them being involved in suits with Samsung and getting Samsung products banned and certain signs and these two companies pissing at each other, last quarter Samsung did officially outpass Apple on phones. They, Samsung? Yeah, they did. We were that. Uh, second one there, Samsung. Is it smartphones or all phones? It, it, it's on the it's on the smartphone. It's doing apples to apples comparison. Nokia is still king on phones. On all phones. Yeah, on all phones. When you're doing cross the board stuff, it, it, it will take a while for somebody to get large enough to dethrone Nokia. <laughs> it's like, well, wait a minute, is that Lincoln here, Samsung? Oh, here it is. Managed yep. to outship. Wow, it's from Wall Street. Yeah, and, and this has to do also with the other thing that we were talking about after the show the other day about you know Apple didn't quite meet what they wanted. You know, it, it's. Well, yeah, there's you know people. Look, let's put it this way, though. Apple's still making money hand over fist. They're, they're making money, but like I said, they've kind of reached their plateau, and now it's starting to go over, and their competitors are overtaking them now with... Well, Android already surpassed market share, but, you know, then but, I know but, that but But now, now this is the other This is the other thing that the uh, Apple fanboys wanted to argue on. Well, no one company is doing... You know, so it, it's all the companies combined. Well, now that's no longer true. It's a single company versus a single company on the other platform. So now not only is the platform outstretching them, but there's a single shipper of devices outstretching them on the phones. Hasn't happened yet on the slates, but the slates are just Apple heating up. Apple sold more of the iPhone 4S because I knew its market was, was larger because they're in more countries now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if this holds true for fourth and first quarter for the next three quarters. Well, going you know, but as Android already surpassed the market share, but the thing of it is, is that Apple computers will go, oh, Apple's hitting a profit share. First of all, that is such a fuzzy mathematical thing to say. Pro profit share is the total profits of the pie. Is it totally an arbitrary number of whatever is set? If you want to say at a profit rate that this company is making per unit sold, that's a different story. But to say there's a, here's a whole pie of profits, and then Apple gets this share. I mean, what? I mean, that is total nonsense. <laughs> total nonsense. And uh, but 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 you don't even need to argue. And Apple Pierce, Pierce doesn't even need to argue profit share. Apple's making tons and tons of money hand over fist, though. And, no, but for and, the long uh, run, the units they're shipping and the strength of the platform really does matter because um, yeah, a, 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 Apple right now, why it, it pains me to admit this, uh, industry-wise is in a great position to directly compete with the changing and moving to the cloud through iTunes. They have this great marketplace to compete through if they do it right. 
But if they don't, per because Apple's philosophy is everything has to go through their platform, that they're a largely closed system, and it's well, in their I box. You know, it's going to be very interesting. Why? Because it's two major competitors uh, on Go either front. Whether Google it's and Amazon. They literally have barbarians yeah, at both gates. We're talking about Google and Amazon have that cloud infrastructure, and they're going the other direction. And, and there's already problems with any cloud. People are losing documents and all this other stuff, and, and it'll be worked out, I'm sure. But that's a massive undertaking to get the cloud correct and everybody's data and switching user accounts or merging user accounts into one. I mean, that's a massive hurdle for Apple to undertake. And, well, and it's never been their strong suit. No, it's not their strong suit, and as you're pointing out, they're already kind of behind, and they're hedging all their bets on a platform that is being handicapped with what it's competing against. So, w without meaning to, they could wind up obsolete in this chapter because they don't. They, they if they, if they don't position themselves now to secure an offering. Well, they've got a large enough user base to, uh, with, that is using it, they've got a tremendous, I mean, we just can't turn it off. I mean, there's, certainly, people can can just certainly drop the iPhone uh, and move on to something well, else. But uh, okay, but let, thing, let, yeah. let, let, let me do another counter-argument on that. I mean, how many iPhone Mac users do you know that do everything through FaceTime, or a lot of them using Skype? And the alternatives that work I don't know with. Anybody using FaceTime? Now. Yeah, it's like the, they're, they're using Skype because Skype's the platform that just works, and they're going with everyone else. See, Apple doesn't let you use really other cloud services as freely. Uh, okay, you know? but unless they go in and basically prevent you from installing all Google. I mean, Google is making theirs to largely work through Chrome and Chromium. So you download Chrome and Chromium, and you're going to kind of have backdoor access. Um, uh, and you can get that. I think can't you get Chrome for iOS? You don't know. I see. I've been had I, an iOS phone since the uh, 3GS. I know they let. I, I, my wife has the iPhone 4, but I don't mess with her phone. I, I know I, they let Opera I on there. I'm with it, so. I, I know uh, they let Opera on there. So if Google made, if you can't get it now, all Google would have to do is make one, and then that would be the thing. Uh, and the. And the same thing with Amazon. You know, you, it's it, there. It's not so. If Apple misses that, and the only place they make money is on the front end, they're going to be really disadvantaged from other people in that market uh, as the market breaks up like that, because they're not going to be able to get you to use their offering because they didn't position it well enough early enough. Like I, I know Apple doesn't consider this important, and Apple fanboys definitely don't. But if they want to stay relevant in that, they kind of have to. <laughs> well, as the coolness icon wears off of Apple, which I, I do, I still still say, regardless of whatever anybody says. I mean, it's not all, but there's a good chunk of the demographic that buys Apple products because of the iconic status. Period. I know too many of them. I mean, you can't tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, it's a fashion like, accessory. Like, trust me, no tons of people that are complaining bitch about the services of the Apple products, but yet keep it because it's the cool thing. Yeah, th that's the thing. That Apple logo, logo has become like a fashion accessory. Uh -huh. And that's one of the reasons I never really... I, I'm not in that camp. I, I, I am a minority when it comes to the consumer. I could give a crap if it looks like crap. As long as it's good under the hood. When I get underneath, yeah. as long as it's good, I don't really care. Functional, you know, functional form. And, and you know, speaking of Android, and I screen hello, Mr. Duarte, who's the, the design, who was hired away from uh, Palm, you know, with the WebOS project, has brought WebOS UI shit to, to ice cream. I am totally impressed. Well, and with WebOS probably being off the market, that's a good but thing. The designer of WebOS is working for Google. No, I know that. Yeah. And, and well, and that that's potentially more legal issues for Google because there's already people claiming, you know, on the Apple side. Yeah, but but yeah. but but, but, but <laughs> HP's not going to pursue it. That's it's already done. The cards, the card system is now so ubiquitous. 
the oh, I, I, I agree with you. I'm just saying, you know, Apple might play on that because that's even though they, they didn't. It's funny, they have, you know. It's, I, I know. Would, I, that's something that iOS would immediately become uh, just awesome if if it, if it implemented something from WebOS. But hey, Android Android took it, and kudos to Android for going after the designers because WebOS is, I mean, sorry, it's the best mobile OS UI known to man. I, I I prefer the Android platform. However, there most of the reasons I prefer. Well, trust me. When you get ice cream, you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. No, no. I I've I've looked at it, and we're going to talk about that more on Tuesday. <laughs> anyway, it's getting back to Appleness. Um, uh, there's uh, it, the, the, and like getting back to the market share thing with Apple. There's another thing going on here with the market shareness, and that is that. AT&T, you know, the company who bought Singular and originally was getting a lot of its growth from owning iPhones and being the exclusive and yada yada. Now that that ship is selling, that time has passed, AT&T is getting new subscribers in spite of all the things they're doing wrong, like screw you customer and you suck customer and just give us your money and then go away and we'll give you nothing for it because that's the AT&T way. But uh, they're they're growing, but most of their new subscribers are not, you know. Oh, I got to get the new iPhone because of all the things AT and T does and AT and T sign. You know, the the new iPhone users are primarily coming into Verizon, or and we'll you know statistics on this later next year. Uh, uh, Sprint. You know, they're not going to sign. So the ones who are staying with AT and T are largely already iPhone. They're not new customers. It doesn't make AT and T really any money. Do we think there's a saturation point being made with the iOS thing that it's kind of reached its thing, or do we think it can grow like a? Do we think it can double some more through uh, Verizon and Sprint in the states? I think it's got it's got a little bit a little bit more growth behind it. Uh, uh, there's still going to be some people that are going to be attracted to it that may be put off by other operating systems. I do know a few who don't like Android, but you know they've got like the, the first droid and stuff like that um, that also look around. I know more people that bitch about iOS than, than Android, but uh, um, I, I still think they got a little bit. I, I've always said that that the beginning of the fad and the bubble fad is dis, is, is being dissipated. This AT and T article is very clear about how even vendors are beginning to. That fought very hard to showcase just the iPhone and didn't give a shit about much anything else. Are now saying, "Well, we're we're we're, we're going to diversify at this point." Now, Sprint, being the newest one, gave their arm and their and their two legs to get the iPhone. Well, and, and that brings good. up another point. You, you know that. Um, yeah, it, it, that when, I, th- well, that, I, I'm not. I'm not sure that was too smart of them because, like you're saying, it, it is a bubble, and at some point, it's going to go. Okay, it's not cool anymore. Uh, it's is there enough of that bubble left for Sprint to get their twenty mil? Still some growth, and, and things change. You know, things change. I just, I just look at the patterns. Yes, the Apple peers are going to have the argument. Apple is still making money, and I'm not discussing that Apple's going to die. That's not my argument. But there's certainly a plateau and a marginalization that's occurring. Um, of which then Apple needs to do things same as Android, same as any other company. Because when everybody, but see, Android's in a position that they're throwing out features left and right. They are the Microsoft of the early '90s that, on the NT side, that just built. I, 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 I'm glad you say that because I've literally said that's it. it literally is the, it, it's it, it's different companies this time, but it's the exact same thing. You know it. Android is coming up with that. And please don't spare me with Siri. I mean, Siri's already now being scrutinized for security breaches. And, and, like, and like I said, uh, most science fiction shows have already created shows where we give these artificial intelligence human traits to computers. And, and, and in Star Trek and Babylon 5 and what, whatever the, scientific, the science fiction show that has these damn thing uh, computers talk back to you, uh, ridiculous thing like Siri does, other than receiving commands and just outputting. The entire show was dedicated to disarming the computer of that personality. <laughs> and, if, and, if, and if that has been, been written in by other artists who create science fiction shows about 
computers run them up, you know, run them up by having all their other alternate personalities. Apple should get a hint with Siri that that is nothing more than a gimmick. I, 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 I do have an exception to yeah. your sci-fi rule. Mm -hmm. Red Dwarf. Not only did that, the com not that's that British show, but that in that comedy. Yeah, but not only did the computer talk back, but it was a character on the show, and just it, it was the most sassy set. Uh, either versions of of uh, Hall or Holly, you know, uh, either version, the f the female or the guy, it was just it, it talked back all the damn time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, it's this having personality and stuff. I, I mean, a computer take my command. I don't want to hear a damn thing. Your job is once I give you the command to do it as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Don't waste CPU cycles doing anything else other than ex executing my command and delivering the results. End of story. <laughs> well, what about how? Please. That, that's why. That's why how got dangerous, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I agree. I, I, I am wondering on the Siri thing how long before we start seeing... Because I'm sure... Oh, yeah, gonna... I hate this article where they say they're yeah, Android and trying to make an app like Siri. Please don't. I'm not interested. Android's already got a fantastic audio, even translation, command services... We don't need well, no, I, I, here's what I see being added to iOS. Just like you can buy personalities for your TomTom -tom or your GPS, I see you being able to add, uh, add personalities to Siri. And I honestly see one of the personalities being shut up. And honestly, on the Android side, for the reasons you're saying, I think that would be a better solution. Just let an app developer create a plugin for the Android yeah. API that adds the functionality for people who want their device to be sassy to them. Because there are people who want that. But they're, they're a niche market, and all of them want it to be sassy in a different way. So, you know, let that be a functionality app rather than a, a core OS feature. Yeah. But there is already an application. I forget the name of it. I saw an article of it today um, where I think it's already in beta. But to me, that's like these Android apps that say make Android look like iOS. <laughs> we, we talked about that in PCV Mac. It's like, why? What? Why? <laughs> you know what? You know, the advantage of a more open architecture is you can do whatever the hell you want, even if it's a bad idea. <laughs> so yeah, I don't even know how I would behave on it. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just to me, iOS is so archaic. I mean, I know that probably Apple users find that insulting. I'm just sorry. I look when you go to I, the ecosystem is awesome on iOS. Well, no, I say that that, 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 that goes back. OS and, and, and others that you can do things far quicker and manage it with within the UI. You can't go back to iOS. It's, it's well, like, say, and that, that, see, oh. that goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. Apple's biggest competitive thing in the market that's emerging is the iTunes iApp marketplace platform that they have there. But they're crippling it by tying it to this can't use it captain platform. And that that's it's like they're basically they're gonna make their advantage worthless if they don't fix that problem. Because that is the I have a question, I'm not I'm not sure. Is the iTunes music store open to Android devices? No. Because uh, Windows obviously has an iTunes for it. There's an the iTunes version. app for Windows. No, it's not. And that to me is one of Apple's big mistakes. It's not open to Linux. It's not open to Android. It's only open to Windows because OS X doesn't have enough of a market Windows share. 7 going to be able to? Oh, no, because Windows now has their own marketplace. So well, I it, well, and you'll still be able to get the Windows application. And I'm it, call me crazy. I don't think Apple's suicidal enough to say, "Okay, Windows 8 users, you can't have iTunes." But are they going to make an optimized for the slate form factor that Windows 8 is doing? Or are they going to leave it where you have to drop back to desktop mode, and the only way to get an integrated works with the UI feel is on iOS? You know, because they don't—they're not required to make it work seamlessly. They, they created the Windows app because you can't sell the platform ignoring Windows, but they ignore everybody else. <laughs> and, and I think that's their mistake. It's a marketplace. It, it, they should be releasing that marketplace access to everybody. 
You know, they can do it however they want. They can make it, okay, you want to use it on Linux, you have to download a proprietary app. You want to use it on Android, you have to download our proprietary app. You know, that they can do that if they want, if that's how they want to do it, for DRM reasons or SOD or whatever. But the fact that they don't do that, and they're kind of trying to channel everything through the Apple Eye experience, is, in my opinion, a big mistake because it, it's weakening the greatest strength that they have that marketplace. Is that 